Seat. Catch the fire tonight on KFM's Hot Seat. Every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. It's hot, it's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. The hottest debate on all relevant topics, live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM's Hot Seat. Every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. KFM's Hot Seat. Only on 933 KFM. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Derek Wandera. Welcome to the Hot Seat tonight, which features uh, um, senior journalists, pundits, and uh, analysts to divulge and uh, indulge into some of the hot stories that have gone through uh, the week. This week um, has been quite a busy one. Um, the Daily Monitor today, uh, for tomorrow, actually, is already out. Uh, you can look out uh, some of the best stories uh, running on fumes running on fumes and there is um, the, 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 the Bank of Uganda picture and all the scandals that are happening therein. Um, there is quite a lot that you are going to read in uh, tomorrow's paper, Saturday, uh, among other very, very big stories there. I have uh, a very small panel, but I know it's very, very efficient. I have on my left um, Jimmy or Doc. Uh, you're welcome. How has been your week? Very good, thanks. Thanks for having me, Derek. And on my extreme right, I have uh, 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 Munabu, Munagomba, <laughs> Munagomba Isaac uh, Kayonde, a uh, senior analyst there and a politician. That at that, uh, he's vied and he's still vying for political office. Um, in his constituency. Very good evening to you. Good evening, uh, Derek. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks. Yeah, I want to begin with you, Isaac. Uh, there has been there has been celebrations in in Ecuador. I don't know what what is uh, that about. Oh well, uh, the president is meeting uh, is meeting uh, different groups of people from different uh, areas, but uh, there's a specific group from Gomba, at least which I know is uh, uh, people he has paid. Uh, people who he has paid for uh, school fees and uh, and uh, you know those from those families from uh, uh, underprivileged uh, that uh, so it's from around across the country mm. uh, they are celebrating his achievements I'm not too sure uh, and they are celebrating his achievements uh, uh, so. That's paid, at least paid, I know the paid, which paid school from. fees means state house scholarship or yeah, something yeah, different. especially yeah, state house scholarships. Yeah, mm. those are the majority who are there. Mm. Uh, the others, I'm, I'm not too sure. I saw a group. You know, there is a group, a religious group called uh, the religious group that uh, believes in Museveni and wears white all all through. It's so, also there. Museveni is a god in this country. Yes, of course. There's a group. I forget it's how they they was it was it whatever. Uh, no, not Busobozi. Yeah. Busobozi. Also, they are followers, mm. but there's another group which, which was from there's, there's like he's like a cult leader, but they are they believe in the NRM something like that. So but he's, not, he's now a cult leader. Also. Uh, no, he no, no, no. He's not a cult leader. A cult leader. He, yeah, what I think is for me, is, for me, is, for me is, my my biggest problem and, <laughs> and, and, and worry whenever there are such um, there are such events at Kololo. Mm. Kampala becomes a mess. Impassable roads. Yeah, yeah, I was I was yeah. driving through Nakulabia trying to get here in time, but I had mm. to abandon the car because yeah. it's it's crazy. I yeah. mean, the entire Kololo is cut off. I mean, yeah. is that what 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 we expect? So there was an editorial of a newspaper this week, mm. you know, talking about when the president. Um, whenever the president is coming to town, the roads are shut down and, mm. and causes real inconveniences to people. Mm. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe really, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a convenience for me either. It's something that uh, that uh, that uh, the security has to look into. The inconvenience of hosting a president in Kololo is now becoming a bit uh, too high. And for me, again, I, there are so many things that you see wrong around uh, around this city. I mean, Kololo now, I, I think they are trying to construct a wall around it. I feel so pained mm. about it. As in, uh, you know, this is an independence ground. This mm. is where this should be, should have access. You can, there's a way you can uh, put security. But you imagine that uh, 
a place of such national importance is going to have a war. Mm. And they're doing it. And nobody's saying anything, you know. How does it fit in? Because into... the citizens are powerless, you know. When uh, they decide something, uh, you know, no, you know how, I, I how think, powerful the president I think is. for me it's also, it's also a, a lack of ex- exposure, you know, with people. Uh, and, they, and that little petty corruption where let's, let's put a budget for a wall mm. and then people will, you know, come and uh, get, some get some money, money over it. Mm. Uh, it's uh, absolutely unnecessary. On the security of the president, I think for me that is a, 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 a no compromise. I'll give you an example. Mm. Uh, when the head of the United uh, the United States is, uh, is uh, comes into a country, mm. uh, you must close the road uh, the road that he's going to use for twenty four hours. No, I think it's twelve hours. Mm. Uh, in the U- for for the queen or the king for that matter, it used to be twenty four hours. hours. Mm. In Africa, for a head of state, a road must be cleared at least at least a kilometer mm. of no passage. These are security Measure. uh, measures, mm. and uh, and like I said, so I don't want to uh, assume that uh, uh, you know. Different countries handle it differently. In Europe, it's a different kind of affair because of the level at which their security is, and 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 uh, the exposure. So, uh, for me, I, I wouldn't want to compromise the the, the present security, but. Uh, for certain events, I think uh, Kololo now is becoming a, a, a more of a burden. Than, but pres- uh, President Museveni seems to be becoming more paranoia and, 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 and probably insecure as, 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 as long as he stays in power. What do you think? Because I know that this has not been the norm maybe in the, in the last 10 years or, or 20 years. We've not experienced the level of disorganization that's caused by the president's movement in the city. Jimmy, what do you make of a no, no, That's happening? true. They say when the president had just come, would interact freely with people and even his own security would get scared. But now it seems to worry so much. Maybe he thinks people not, don't like him anymore. Maybe it's about the level, you know, terrorism and security. The the level of uh, security threats maybe have, uh, have, 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 have gone high from, if you consider, like maybe 10, 20 years ago. Mm. So they try to, you know, minimize the threats as much as possible by doing that. And it's really... The other day I saw President Seven moving in a glass car when he was, uh, I think... He was he was um, he was uh, uh, inspecting the, the the guard. Yeah, and it's something that shocked many Ugandans. No, no, no. I well, my my take on it is that look, um, the th- uh, th- uh, the threat levels mm. of any leader who stays in power forty years mm. is is bound to yeah. the threat levels uh, become a bit. Higher than normal. Mm. I mean, we all remember when Gaddafi would come here. He, he literally would shut down town. Yeah. You know, he went to New York and and, and, and shut down. You know, a, a, a lot of those um, yeah, of their uh, streets and everything. So I, again, like I said, I wouldn't call it paranoia. I would just imagine that look, uh, the threat levels are, are very high. I remember when uh, he he was going to. Juba, mm. and he chose to go by road, and uh, he literally took half the half the whether I call it fourth division or whatever. Mm. And and when they asked him and about it, and recently while he was going to Rwanda, he but in, in Rwanda they stopped the no, they, 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 they stopped no, the, you yes. can't no, uh, uh, the war. Yes, what what <laughs> what happened in Rwanda was that uh, look. Uh, y- 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 the guns had to stop, you know, at a certain point mm. because uh, Again, look, yeah, we, you we understand. yeah, you understand that mm. it looked like an invasion. Mm. While countries like uh, South Sudan allowed him to go with everything he had, you mm. know, mambas, choppers, everything, you know. So for me, depending on the threat levels, yeah, you give him. You, you, I mean, for me, uh, he he has his. Uh, security, uh, I wouldn't wish to compromise, but I think for me, on the part of security, they should be able mm. to deal and protect the president with the least public 
disorganization and inconvenience. Yeah. For me, I, so I for example, Kololo. The issue is about inconvenience that it causes. Yeah. And but do people know when the president, some people are just driving, they have no idea. Is, it, yeah. is there yeah. a way they can publicize that, you know, the president will be there, so you keep away yeah. if you're not going to be part of that uh, yeah, that, that function. Yeah. So it is, and, and also, mm. you know that maybe they, they have to find alternative. If you know that Kololo is a, like a central, like people use that route a lot. Yeah. Could they go to people go, go to state house? He has hosted functions at state house. Mm. Can he host people there so that it doesn't, you know? For me, I think this the back stops with the security of the president. Mm. We need to be very clear with them mm. and tell them, look, there's, there are better ways to secure your president. You can secure him in Kololo mm. without blocking the road. Block the road when he's going so that you let traffic go as soon as he enters and you secure him from there. I, I, but again, I'm not not a security expert. I just think that it's uh, being overzealous. Let's um, jilt into 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 Parliament. Uh, Isaac, you have uh, you, you you articulating a few issues here about the battle that has been between uh, the executive and and and, 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 and the legislature um, about that bill um, about the bill and 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 actually appropriation of funds. funds. It has been a very big discord and I saw in parliament flares uh, 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 angers, ang angered people uh, jumping on the, on the, on the tables. Mm. Can't, you can't handle things the way Kenya is handling things. <laughs> 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 I have said it clearly before yes, that it is highly unlikely mm. that we will have people going on the street, judges going on the street. Mm. But it is possible, mm. you know. Uh, in politics, uh, you can never know, right? Uh, back to Parliament, I think again, the issue of powers, mm. the issue of powers, the, the president is simply exercising his constitutional right to reject a bill. That is within him. Right? Yeah. Parliament, in its wisdom or unwisdom, I don't know what's the opposite of wisdom. <laughs> the, the opposite of wisdom, it's a journalist slant, whichever it is, should be able, should be able to say, okay, we don't want this, we don't want that. Mm. But for me, let me uh, let me explain what happened because everything is in, out in yes, the uh, public domain. Mm. But depending on where your confirmation bias is, mm. if you're listening to the opposition people, they, they, uh, what they say is, is is true. And when they, you know, but this, I think this, actually it wasn't even just opposition; it was yeah. Parliament yes. up against President. I, I don't think so because they eventually passed it. Of yeah. course they did, yeah. but but they, you know the circumstances. The wall, not, you know the circumstances not, under which yes. they, they, they are NRM MPs who stood up and said, "We do not think this is the appropriate way. This is not the right appropriation of these funds." Yeah. But we are going because we we have nothing to do. Yeah. You get it. it seemed it at that point you looked at a very powerless parliament that could not defend themselves as a parliament, and this is I think. Um, in this, in this whole, I think in this whole term, this is the first time we are seeing uh, that kind of clash. Mm. We saw it during uh, during uh, uh, the right round uh, of Rebecca Litwala Kadaga, yeah. and there were clashes between executive and and, and 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 the legislature. I don't know. What do you think, Jimmy? I think you're saying the parliament is powerless. It seemed powerless. It doesn't only seem. I think the president is too powerful. Mm. They are, the way you know, arms of government are supposed to operate, mm. you don't have, uh, you know, the president is more powerful than the parliament, the judiciary and everything. So whatever he wants goes this way. Mm. You can't be seen to be fighting against him. And he set a stage for that by first making them look corrupt mm. before you know, before acting, look corrupt, like, like making corrupt. MPs look. I, I to, then he's been the, the corruption has been entrenched and it's part of the problem. Jimmy, put it there. Let's go for a quick commercial break, and when we return, more of this. The hottest debate on all relevant topics live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM's Hot Seat covers all the relevant topics every weekday, seven to eight PM. KFM's Hot Seat. Hot Seat. Hear the real story behind the story. Coming right at you. Only on 933 KFM. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is still the Hot Seat, uh, which features uh, senior journalists, panelists, and uh, analysts to just throw light on some of the stories, big stories that have happened throughout the week. This time around, I have uh, Isaac Kayonde uh, from, um, from Gomba. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that's what I can say. Isaac Ayone from Gomba and Jimmy from uh, from from the civil society. Uh, mental health issues. Uh, uh, he's very very articulated and and, 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 and very serious about them. Isaac, I wanted you to explain to me that yeah. exactly that you were explaining off air. Yeah, I, I was saying, uh, first of all, this is unprecedented. Mm. Uh, the president, in his 38 years of power, mm. has never returned a budget a bill. And this has always been premised on the fact that, you see, the powers of budgeting are vested in the executive. Mm. As a president, he is the head yes. of the executive. He delegates his powers to the Minister of Finance, and budgeting is done by the President. Now, he comes up with a budget, gives it to Parliament, and Parliament goes through the appropriation. Now, this is the, the issue or the crux of the matter and had been guided by uh, the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. Is appropriation, does appropriation go across sectors? Or does appropriation happen in a sector? Mm -hmm. And that issue of saying, okay, we are taking money out of health, we are taking it to wax. Mm. We are taking uh, all that. Then what is budgeting? The mandate of the population is given to the executive. Mm. The executive has, has a manifesto. The people have said, these are the people who will budget. Anyway, so the whole thing is, uh, the issue of the appropriation was that is parliament overstretching its appropriation powers mm. to distort the budget. Because once you start moving f funds from sector to sector, mm. then I imagine that you are budgeting, right? Mm. Which is different. Now, those schools of thought, I think, have a legal, uh, a legal so who, mind. Who is supposed now. to be in charge of the, the appropriation? Now, uh, the appropriation is a parliamentary function. Yes. But the appropriation... How it is done is the question. Mm. We, we are not, nobody is saying, you know, don't, parliament don't appropriate. How are you appropriating? Now, generally in this whole thing, we need to look at, uh, going back to the issue at, at, at hand, is that the president raised question, uh, fundamental questions in his, in his letter to parliament. Mm. He raised the issues of what? Sabotage, mm. yeah, which is neither here or there. Uh, he raised the issues of corruption. Right, mm. and then he looked through uh, the things, the the, the seven hundred and fifty billion that he was mm. talking about. Yeah. The seven hundred and fifty billion he was talking about. They said, "Look, their theme was industrialization, and they had appropriated or they had budgeted mm. based on that theme. You know, give the industries, keep them working, let them run, and <clears> everything. <throat> Health as a as a sector also had its its things. Buy ambulances, buy." numerous things but the way it has been reported is that you know what he has taken our money to give it to Rocco, Rocco. right and that is what is on people's minds that he has taken money for ambulances to give it to Rocco you know and the opposition are going with that same uh, mindset the people are taking it you know wholeheartedly and uh, then you have to look at which areas was the president talking about. You took money from the atomic uh, uh, atomic uh, atomic uh, agency mm. uh, for nuclear, whatever. You took money. He, he listed a number of things that he was looking at that that money should have <coughs> in there. One of the biggest things, as far as dealing with corruption is concerned, is that the three MPs who are in jail today are from the budget committee. Why are they there? For trying to... To dip their hands to dip, into... The, yes, uh, into... into public yes. Coffers. Now, with these new appropriations of ambulances, hospitals, and whatever, it seemed like the members of the budget committee were appropriating money to their constituencies of those social services. Mm. That is another form of corruption. That's because you see, as a legislator, you will benefit in the sense that you will go and tell people I'm working so much. But... In the grand scheme of things, you, you're looking at your village or constituency, but the executive is looking at the generality of the economy. Right? Don't, you think, don't you think, actually, government for over the years has, has had a lot of uh, beating because of, um, because of not prioritizing the, the things that we think are a priority for health, public health, which um, I see comes out very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. Issues of I think one of the issues that President Seven has mastered is the security. Mm -hmm. But then 
uh, health, education, and things like that. And I see that that's where the legislators have issues, that if you are not prioritizing health, education, and, 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 and water, mm. which are a key, com a key component of, 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 of any country or any humanity, mm. then you are losing it. And, and, and whether or not I was reading uh, the PSST's uh, uh, tweet the other day, trying to clarify on the on the on the, on the, on the three hundred billion, yes, yes. Yeah. and 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 he breaks it down yeah. to about thirty something billion, which is supposed to be given to to Rocco. Mm. But what I don't know, Jimmy, <clears throat> where is president? Where is the president missing it out? And 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 who is to blame in, whole, in this whole mess? Who is to blame? I think one, you know the budget, there's a budget framework paper. It's an elaborate process when they're doing all these things. Yeah. So how did it how did it come up to the budget reading then it realizes all this? Yes. Uh, the, 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 the PSST informed him of this discrepancy where Bank of Uganda money had been uh, what the PSST in his uh, in tweet, his tweet yeah. mm. said there was an overcut of 300 billion. Yes. So it was an overcut from he even wrote the, the it was the uh, treasury operations, mm. right? So his was to bring to light treasury operations. Now when that vote, that treasury operations vote, he quoted the number mm. and talked about the amounts which they had uh appropriated elsewhere. That is where this issue came around, and he, it, he raised the issue with the president after the reading, and the president uh, went you, back you to see, the You there might see, there might have been a corruption syndicate, as the yes. president noted in the State of the Nation address, yes. that you know there's a racket, there's some accounting officers who do ABC and uh, doing it the wrong way. Yeah. It might have been there, yeah. but also the president might not be very clean. It might have been over the years, mm. and then these people learned that, you know, this is possible. It can be done. Mm. So, uh, this corruption now, if you blame parliament, then the executive is also in trouble, because when the president goes asking for supplementary, mm. you know, you know, state house, this, state house, all that, mm. what is that? Isn't that corruption? No, I, I, again, again, <laughs> again, I, I, uh, Jimmy, you are not let, answering let me, my questions. Let, 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 I, I know... <laughs> Uh, Isaac is is, is, is is the man of NRM here, yeah, yeah, but we I, but we, we we need not to, to yes. throw all this. But if he has answers anyway, you mm. can you can help because so there there is a lot mm. uh, that that we think that is 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 having so much mismatch, and 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 the mismatch is that this is the first time the president is throwing back and after a budget reading, then the budget um, the, the the bill is thrown out. He, he brings it back to Parliament, and and you were giving some context to it. Mm. So could there be some? And, and and like you said, I think it's a power struggle. You know, even struggle. even Rocco itself, people are asking who is, who is, who is Rocco? Rocco? Yeah, you know, and again I, I explained it. You you say it's about mm. employment, giving uh, people no, jobs. Uh, yes. but some people are saying that maybe Rocco, however much money you give it, mm. it's not. It's Rocco, it's, it's, Rocco is just the same as Pinetti. You remember? Uh, no, no, same, no, 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 no. The same as no. I'm saying just contextually. Yes, not to be exact. Okay, they're the same. Okay. I'm just saying yeah. uh, the way government has come out to give Pinetti money, mm. uh, even when she has not delivered the the the, the, the hospital, the some roads that was were, were allocated and stuff like that. Okay. So who is Roku? Let me explain, and I explained this uh, earlier. Roku is not a company which has just started. No. 1969. Mm. is when this Roko company was formed. Roko is an indigenous company. Roko is around the region. Roko is in Uganda, uh, Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, and I think uh, one of those Central African countries. But anyway, the issue here is Roko in its state today is a company that cuts across numerous why must spheres we, of the economy. Why must we bail out Roko? Let me tell you why. Because the failure of Rocco today is, has been caused by government in many instances and many ways. First of all, I'm not, let me give you this disclaimer. I'm mm. not a Rocco uh, spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> but from what I've read, mm. really, mm. Uh, according to, to the research, Rocco has about 1.4 trillion mm. in contracts, mm. right? Mm. Uh, and most of those contracts are government. Government delays to pay, for example, right? Mm. 1.4 trillion. Wow, wow. 
how do you expect the company to survive? If the company says that, look, give me 200 billion to keep afloat, mm. that's not a big ask. You know, and secondly, it is a big ask. It's a big ask because is Rock isn't Rocco a private company? It is a private How company. How then does government enter into? I mean, like you even leave the issues, the, the biggest issues like mm. health, yeah. education, water, things like that. No, and you appropriate two hundred million to two, two billion. Rocco. What billion to Rocco? Why Rocco? Look, there is, and again, like I said, this is not the first time companies are being uh, bailed out. Why must we bail out companies? Because it is beyond the company failing. There is more benefit Roku surviving than but it fails. Is, is there a transparent way they are chosen that we bail out this? Oh, you know, it's the prerogative of the president I want to you choose. To, I want you to kindly go and check on the list of UDC companies. Companies that UDC uh, has shares in. Mm. All the companies that UDC has shares in are precisely because government was intervening. This is not something unique to Uganda. We saw in the credit crunch of the U.S. Okay, mm. the the government injected money in s saving strategic companies, and they went and they applied, and after that they paid back. Rocco is simply saying, "Look, give me two hundred billion for shares. Mm. Those are co those are preferential shares. Preferential shares mean that look, uh, when we make or lose, you have first priority." Mm. Right, that is what as, uh, uh, Rocco is asking, and it's saying, "Look, after I stabilize, I buy back those shares." Right, so mm. Rocco is simply giving you a unique situation. Some people are, are advocating for UDC to get to, uh, equity shares and, uh, and all that and everything in Rocco, which I anyway that's a the whole di different dynamic about. Uh, economics, but for me, what I'm saying is that the country, as it is, Rocco, with its tender hooks and and uh, benefits, with its uh, tender hooks and benefits, mm. is is better alive and running than when it collapses. Because if it collapses, we are losing. Uh, not, I'm not. Uh, as a country, we will survive. Yes, but there is that issue of if you're dealing with uh, uh, unemployment and uh, Rocco has a huge um, h huge staff base, uh, direct and indirect jobs, taxes Rocco is Isaac, the biggest. let's go for a quick commercial break and when we return we shall pick it up from there and sure. KFM's Hot Seat. It's hot, it's live provocative and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. 933 KFM. KFM. Honest debate on all relevant topics live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM's Hot Seat covers all the relevant topics every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Derek Wadera sitting in uh, for, the and uh, for the old man of the clan, Andrew Mwenda. Uh, Timothy Kalijira, um, a regular on this show, normally doesn't want us to say that we are sitting in for. I am the one in the seat today. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, as we went on the break, uh, you were trying to, to bring out um, the, the, the discrepancies that we've seen in the public domain. Let's just have one minute each on this topic before we cross it to another. Mm. Yes. See, bailing out like Rocco and others, <coughs> Sajabalawa and many other things, it's not so transparent the way how it's done. Mm. How, is it the president who decides that for this one, I think you can pay. I don't think Rocco, the number, the figures you give about Rocco employing this number of people 3, is about, is debatable, really. Rocco seems like almost a dead. Someone, a member of parliament was saying, however much we put this money, we think the money is just going to be sinking. And, mm. and uh, so, um, but also, Rocco is just one of those. That the the way the, the seven hundred fifty million, the the appropriation bill, how the president says send it back. The whole thing, how it was done, just looks very shabby. You don't know. I do you think it's about what's happening across in Kenya? Is he trying to to to, to show that he cares so much? Uh, has this corruption just started, or it's been going on? Is it is it part of the? You know, it's when you begin looking at it all. It looks very, but uh, I mean, it's good to do something. Is, is now part of the how the system, fu you know, functions. So everyone is corrupt. I I don't know. They went to a, they went to meet the president at the state house. They had a meeting. I'm told the minister broke down after she was also accused of that. And uh, 
But I think the, the director general, as you said, Robert Mukiza, is doing a, is a yeah, very wonderful, wonderful job, job in my view. So, mm-hmm. but if, how much when you do wonderful work, good work, if the corruption, you know, if you're accused of corruption, it taints all that good thing. I don't know, it's still an allegation. Maybe it is an allegation, and I can put some some kind of. And again, I'm not a spokesperson of you, yeah. but I know <laughs> some of the stories that I've been following up, and I think there was there was a company that 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 ended their contract prematurely. And then uh, I think workers had to be given extra work. So this service award is not per se service award, but just compensation for the extra work that had been given to to the workers. And mm-hmm. and and that is what uh, the honourable is calling a service award and whatever. Mm-hmm. But it came it came actually from the board. Uh, the board had to sit and they agreed and and everything happened that way. But I know that when they went to the president seven president seven for this. Uh, uh, meeting mediation meeting, this came out very clearly, and uh, and 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 to her disappointment, she came back and ranted uh, the honourable mm. and said she's going to the court here and to, <laughs> <laughs> to exhibit. Uh, <laughs> Isaac, what do, what do you really do all this? Well, first of all, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to sound like really I'm being defensive on all fronts, mm. but uh, according to Mukiza. A version of the story mm. is this: this money is was is is legal, right? Yeah. It's more of a moral question than a, a legal, a legal, a legal yeah. issue, mm. because this money is, is was in the contracts mm-hmm. of, of some of the uh, the, companies, the, com- yes. the contractor uh, yes. at Namanve. Mm. This money is in the contract. Mm. What usually happens, and it used to happen back in the day, where you okay, I think it still does, mm. where you have finance. Uh, uh, empl- uh, staff of government of Uganda and Ministry of Finance mm-hmm. who then uh, get on two projects uh, within that same ministry. Yes. Now, when you are on a project in mm-hmm. the Ministry of Finance, whether it is a financial accounting management system or one account, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you get paid for the project for the extra and, and then you get your salary, salary as yes. a, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Because you've been given yeah, because, an extra, yeah, because uh, you apply for that project, yes. those project things, and you do them, and mm-hmm. it's extra, and it's it's a separate thing. Where finance staff, and even at the time, I think uh, when uh, Keith Mohaganizi was a deputy uh, PSS, mm-hmm. he he was earning about ten thousand dollars a month from a project in Ministry of Finance. Mm-hmm. And earning like 2.5 million from the government of Uganda. Mm. Uh, again, like I said, please don't quote me on these figures, but I, you know, as one of the uh, things that uh, happened there. So it, it, it was, it is the similar thing mm. in the uh, Uganda Investment Authority. However, what, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, what Anita uh, is, uh, the Honorable, is talking about, mm. is that, uh, you know, she has called it corruption. She, this, the, 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 the staff who took the money have agreed to put it, take it back because uh, in terms of what they took in the grand scheme of things, maybe they have the ability to pay it back, which they have agreed, and that's it. But for me, again, it is, it is, we are in that phase right now mm. where these people were like Siamese twins. Anita Mukiza, you would not, you would not. Where you see Mukiza, you would yes, see Anita yes, and the, yes. and and uh, what's his name, uh, uh, the chairman, uh, yes, Maurice uh, Rakamba. Rakamba, yes. So what this, happened? The, the, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I, I am not one to usually speculate and gossip and, uh, and do all things. The but sh- sharing the loot. They I'm may. Be, I don't know. <laughs> those those are your words. But whatever <laughs> hindered or whatever came in between those three. <laughs> Uh, is <laughs> let's go push on <laughs> <laughs> okay, FM's hot seat. It's hot, it's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's, KFM's hot, seat. hot seat. Hear the real story behind the story. Coming right at you only on 933 KFM. Welcome back to this uh, last segment of our show. Uh, um, I was going to say on the spot. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, we we've been having quite uh, in depth and the and 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 what sometimes we call the throat cutting sources have or been whispering to us. Corruption and you know that corruption is taken. <laughs> yeah, right now corruption is like that that stray dog uh, on the streets. Anyone who sees it will, will will get a stone and clobber it, even when it has not eaten anything. So whoever casts at you uh, a corruption scandal, my dear, everyone is, go- is, is going to is going to believe. Uh, Isaac, I want us to shift to to, to Kenya. 
the protests yeah. have been ongoing this afternoon the president was talking back to the to the people yeah agora in uganda has invited president Museveni to a, 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 a twitter space i don't know what the 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 the, the, the gimmicks there are whether he's going to accept or not i don't know but president Museveni is going to accept yeah. uh president william ruto uh of kenya has uh, been on the space uh, i didn't manage to listen in uh, throughout the the conversation but the g the 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 the, the gen the yes. also held their parallel um uh conversation on on, on twitter mm-hmm. i need to check on the numbers i think the gen had more numbers in terms yes. of the, the people who turned up and uh, had more issues to articulate than the president Kenya is still rioting. I have seen the president recalling very many people, removing the the office of the the, the first lady, the second lady, the office of the the office of I think the vice president and things like that. And these are some of the matters that Kenyans have been quarrelling about. That these are extra expenses. For instance, even like travel bans have been put on 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 on, on ministers. Um, they cannot travel a- aimlessly and anyhow like it has been and the, the issue is to cut budget expenses what 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 can kenya achieve from all these um or can what are the misses and the, and, and the gains from all this uh, well um the kenya should, I, I i didn't get the opportunity to listen in but i listened a bit and of course uh, uh, the, the gen z's are not being kind mm-hmm. you know? but for me what i ca- what i can see is that they are winning they are winning. Mm. Uh, they, their demands are being met, uh, although hesitantly. Mm. But they are they, bit by bit. They are winning. My thing is that the riots. I feel like they have. Uh, well, they are sporadic. Mm. Like they are not uh, nationwide like what we saw. You know, two weeks ago, a mm. week ago. Uh, and I believe they will fizzle out because uh, the president is also going on an aggressive uh, communication kind of uh, thing. He's trying really so hard yes. to. To calm them, well, as much as his effort, uh, you you must be working on. Uh, it's a it's a very thin line between you know making a statement that will flare this you know mm. into something else. So I think uh, Ruto is working a tight a tight rope mm. really, mm. Uh, but um, uh, in all, really, I I really think that uh, that level of activism. He's trying so much to find which who is the leader. Mm. Yet mm. now the Gen Zs are talking about arrests, mm. and I said, you know, as Africans, I think we have a we serve two different worlds. When protesters walk, got onto the uh, Senate building in the United States after Trump's win, mm. every protester who was caught on camera. Mm. was arrested across the country you know mm. but somehow when Kenya it happens they burn down uh, eh? and the government says okay yes the protesters who are peaceful we have no problem but the protesters who are burning this is arson awesome. it's mm. a crime right mm. Mm. we go pick them up and the people are saying these are abductions you know so for just, me just the same that happened here over mm-hmm. 1300 people were arrested in the streets of Kampala yeah. and many have termed yeah. them as abductions but i think the word abduction can be used as an okay. because of the the form of, of it's of just honesty. zoom just yeah, okay. english okay. jimmy what do you what do you what do you make of the happenings in kenya so you you you'd like to compare what would have happened in Uganda's case, if we went to, if the Gen Zs of Uganda went to, to protest, like, mm. like did, would we have dividends? Would the president say, okay, I'm cutting down number of ministers, no office of this? Would you have the, would you have the same number, around the same number of, of people killed? You saw what happened during the 2020 riots. This one, how many people were killed? Mm. Remember the Uganda riots. That shows that, can we? Can we emu- can we take emulate them here and try to protest when we have issues? Would we receive? Would we get the same kind of results? Maybe not. But are we again planning to do something similar? The Kenyans have achieved a lot in this because they are not going to be taxed the way they are going to be taxed. Mm. The offices they are stopping buying all these new cars for ministers. Mm. No trips abroad. So they have made a, they have made a statement. Mm. The only thing is that uh, Ruto must go 
will they achieve that? Mm. That is a that and might be a very a very difficult task, one. Yeah. Yeah. That might be much more difficult to achieve, given that Ruto has held it to is held it to many of the demands and is engaging. Would President Seven engage on Twitter? <laughs> talk to the Gen Zs? Would President uh, go go around? You know, I think he would. I think uh, President yeah, Seven yeah. would. President Seven has never shied away from mm. uh, from from uh, from. Uh, no, Sabal I mean, Sabal Sa- thinks Sabal he can Sabal fight. He... Everything is. Yeah, <laughs> he subjects come, himself he's, to. Yes. He's, he's going to come and tell us we shall uh, we shall crush you. We shall crush you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> crush. Yeah, but he goes for the best. So anyway, no, Kenyans have yeah. set a standard, not for just. Uh, the region yeah. for Africa and things a global thing. So it's they're being watched and and it's a very good example. You might say how are the protesters being in the US? They arrested all of them no. in Kenya. Why are they not doing the same? Yeah. It's, it's, it shows how you know they have no, a, protest a, by all means protest. It's your yeah. right, yeah. but you don't have a right to destroy, right? They don't have a right to destroy. But for me, uh, what I'm what 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 I'm what I'm seeing um, in all this is that. Uh, even as as President uh, Ruto um, um, answers the questions that the agencies have been asking for me, it's just because they are touching the, 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 the chair. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> he would have... He, he would have he, he, because you remember his first speech? Yeah, he said was, some of these yeah. a bunch of criminals yeah. who are just yeah. here to destroy our country. We are not going to allow... 24 hours later... The tongue had completely changed from that kind of combative mm. nature, and now it's just for me. It's about stake. Yeah. What is at stake, yeah. and what are his interests and stuff? For me, even I, I, I really understand when Kenya comes out to tax, yeah. but it's because of the mistakes of the of the past mm-hmm. leaders, yes. the leadership style, and it, it, it it's going to happen here in Uganda. It's going to happen elsewhere, mm. and by removing them, I don't know whether you are solving the problem. The problem that Uganda is facing in terms of debt burden is the same problem that Kenya is facing. When you remove these taxes, when you don't tax, then have you will they solve all those problems? Our debt burden is not. And again, I've been here and I've told you before. Mm. You get our problem. The debt is 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 being overstated. Uh, so really, at the end of the day. Uh, Kenya's situation is, is a bit worse in the sense that they are almost clocking uh, seven, the 70, 70% GDP mark. Yes. We are, you know, 46, uh, according to us. Then uh, World Bank will put us at 50. Mm. So, really, we are not yet there. But, uh, but that said, I mean, for me, Ruto is in a very tricky situation. I, 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 I sympathize with him. Mm. He's damned if you do, damned if you don't. If he yeah. tries to mm. speak to the jerseys, they create another platform to do it. Like he's, he's. Uh, I feel like he's trying yeah. and he's being responsive, but uh, the people they are not. Uh, they, are, they they probably uh, again, like I said, the the beauty about the Kenyan thing and as a, as it has happened elsewhere in regime change, is that it has not been led by politicians. There will be, uh, for as long as Ugandans we choose to pick sides mm. uh, politically to protest, they won't be successful. Unless maybe there's, there's this one issue that galvanizes everybody. That's true. Uh, uh, is it also about awareness? Here we seem to be, you know, they are the more politically, they are the, they are more engaging, they understand what's going on here, the, the degrees. But we have a very highly, highly, I mean, that is also belittling uh, Ugandans to really, because Ugandans, to be honest, are very political people. They are aware of their surroundings. They know. Some have expressed it in many ways, but they may not go to the extreme of saying, let me go and uh, die for country. Is it because of the militant or the military culture in this country? Mm. Well, <laughs> Isaac Gayonde doesn't want to mention that, but partly, yes. Uh, yeah, our effective, uh, let me put it this way, mm. our effective uh, crowd control mechanisms. Mm. Uh, I'm very diplomatic. <laughs> Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, unfortunately, we've come to the to the end of this show. Um, I have been myself, Derek Wandera, uh, <laughs> Jimmy Odoki, and Isaac uh, Kayonde of 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 Gomba. Is it Gomba North? Or Gomba Gomba West. Gomba West. <laughs> yes, Gomba West. Um, we have dived into some of those matters, and we shall come back next weekend okay. with even uh, with even a better and uh, better topics, a better panel, better topics, deeper analysis.
a very good evening and a very nice weekend to everyone. The hottest debate on all relevant topics live on KFM's Hot Seat Tonight.